Greetings, Earthlings. Welcome back to episode three of the FAQ series. Today, we're going to be tackling one of the most frequent questions that I get, and that would be, what does all the information on a microphone specification sheet actually mean? We're going to be looking at 10 different specifications. We're going to be using the SM58 and Rode NT1 as the example spec sheets, and I'll also have additional resources linked in the description down below. Number one, the type, and some of the most frequent things you'll see here would be dynamic, condenser, or ribbon, and this is just referring to the technology inside the microphone that turns an analog sound wave into an electrical signal to be interpreted by your mixer or your interface. I should also note here that dynamic and ribbon microphones have no phantom power requirement, meaning you don't have to have any power running into them to work. Condensers, on the other hand, do have phantom power requirements, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And if you're having trouble deciding between a dynamic or a condenser microphone, I made a video quite a while ago talking about that and I'll go ahead and link it in the corner up there. Number two, the frequency response. And this spec will show up in two different areas on your spec sheet. The first one is just a number and this gives you a very top level idea of what the frequencies the microphone will pick up are but it doesn't really show you the tone of the microphone. The graphic, on the other hand, gives you a much better understanding of the tone of the microphone. I also have an old video talking about this, and I'll link that in the corner as well. And I'll also link a great article from Neumann in the description down below where they discuss different frequency ranges, the applications of those ranges, and what you're gonna get out of them. Number three, the polar pattern or directional pattern. Some of the most common here would be a cardioid or an omnidirectional, and it's essentially telling you you what area around the microphone is going to pick up sound. Just like the frequency response, this will typically show up in two portions of the spec sheet. First, it will show up in the list, and right here you can see it lists cardioid, and this just gives you a general idea that the front of the microphone is where the majority of the sound will come from. The graph, on the other hand, gives you a much better idea, as well as a breakdown of the pickup pattern for different frequencies. For instance, you can see that 125 hertz is going to be a lot less louder than 500 hertz from the rear of the microphone, and you'll also see that 8,000 hertz is going to be a lot more prominent than 2,000 hertz from the rear as well. And again, I've already made a video talking about polar patterns, which I'll link in the upper corner. Number four, self noise or equivalent noise level. This figure is telling you how loud of a signal the microphone produces without any external sound input. So it's basically the amount of noise that the microphone is going to add to your recording. So when you're looking at this spec, it's important to look for lower numbers. The lower the number means the less noise is generated by the microphone and the cleaner your recording will ultimately be. Number five, the signal to noise ratio. This spec is telling you the ratio of the desired signal to the amount of self noise generated by the microphone. Therefore, the higher the number here, the better. It just means you're getting more signal of what you're actually recording against the self noise of the microphone. Number six, the sensitivity. And this spec is just telling you how loud the output from your microphone actually is. And how this applies is the lower the number, the more gain you're actually gonna need from your preamp. When we look at the SM58, we see that it's negative 54 and a half decibels, while the NT1 is negative 29 decibels. And that means to achieve the same signal strength, you'll need 25 and a half decibels more gain on the SM58. And just so you're aware, dynamic and ribbon mics typically have a much lower sensitivity when compared to condensers. Number seven, max SPL or maximum sound pressure level. This spec is just telling you the maximum level a microphone can handle before distorting. Now modern mics have really high SPL, so chances are you're not gonna run into any issues here. For instance, the Neumann TLM-102 has a max SPL of 144 decibels. To put that in perspective, a normal conversation is only 60 decibels. If you're at the front row of a rock concert, that's 120 decibels. The loudest human scream is 128 decibels. A 200 person marching band is only 130 decibels and a gunshot is 133 decibels. So as you could see, this really isn't a huge concern for modern microphones. Dynamic microphones typically don't even list this because you're not gonna hit levels that would distort the microphone. But if you're somebody who records sound effects or loud sound sources, this is definitely a spec you should focus on. 
Number eight, dynamic range. This figure is telling you the amount of usable audio you're able to get out of the microphone. They're doing that by taking the max SPL and removing the equivalent noise. Looking at the NT1, we see a max SPL of 132 decibels and an equivalent noise of four and a half decibels. So we get a dynamic range of approximately 128 decibels. Number nine, impedance. And this sometimes shows up in two different ways, output impedance and load impedance. So first off, this spec really won't impact too many people unless you're running really long cables or if you're trying to impedance match your gear. Simply put, impedance is just a measure of AC resistance, which is what electrical audio signals are. So if you have a high impedance mic and you're running extremely long cables, you may actually start to witness a degrading of your sound quality. But for home studio use, when you're running 10 to 20 feet of cable, pretty much anything is gonna be fine here. And then we have load impedance, which is not a spec that has anything to do with the internals of the microphone. This is just telling you the impedance that your preamp should be to get the optimal results. A quick rule of thumb here is that your preamp's impedance should be at least five times that of the output impedance of your microphone. If your preamp is more than five times that of your microphone, no big deal, no issues there. But if it's significantly less, you may actually lose out on some frequency response and the max SPL may be decreased as well. But it won't damage your mic at all. And number 10, power supply or power requirement. This is just telling you how much power the microphone requires to actually function. So when we look at the NT1, you can see that the power requirements are 24 volts or 48 volts of phantom power. And it means exactly that. The microphone needs 24 to 48 volts of phantom power. That's it. So in conclusion, let's go ahead and do a quick speed round about what you should be looking for on the spec sheet. In terms of microphone type, frequency response, and polar pattern, it really just depends on your use case and your personal preference. For the self noise or equivalent noise level, the lower the number, the better. For signal to noise ratio, the higher the number, the better. For sensitivity, it really depends on the preamp that you have. If you have a budget preamp, you may not have enough gain to drive a gain hungry microphone like the SM7B. So in that case, you may want to look for a microphone with a higher sensitivity. For max SPL, the higher the number, the better. But honestly, if you're just doing gaming or recording podcasts or running a home studio, chances are you're never going to run into the limits where you would actually distort your microphone. So you could think of this as irrelevant. For dynamic range, you want to look for a higher number. In terms of impedance, for the majority of you, this won't impact you. But a rule of thumb, the lower the impedance, the better the mic. And lastly, the phantom power requirement. And this only comes into play in two scenarios. The first one being, if you know you're not going to have a phantom power supply, make sure you buy one that does not require that. Or if you have a budget mixer, make sure you know what kind of voltage the mixer actually offers and buy a mic according to that. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope that helped you understand all the nonsense on these microphone spec sheets. If you have any questions that you want answered, leave them in the comments down below. And if you see a question you like, go ahead and give it a thumbs up, and I may answer it on the next episode of the FAQ series. If you want more videos, logo beneath me. Check out the Discord server link in the description, and I will see you all on Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye.